So I was backing the, the truck up to um, to empty out some, some rock and just putting it into a container to save for later because we, we just put some rock around our uh, raised beds and uh, I wanted to uh, conserve and, and try and save some of the rock in the bed of the truck because we're going to keep expanding our, our garden. Anyway, backing the truck up and as soon as I stopped, I took my foot off the clutch and the clutch just whoosh, hit the floor. And obviously, yeah, I, I went to try and start it. Couldn't start it because the, the, the clutch wasn't sensing anything. And on this truck, I had replaced the slave cylinder. I didn't replace the master cylinder because nothing was leaking. So um, first thing I did, I popped the hood open and I checked the master cylinder, which uh, that seems to be perfectly fine. I don't see any leaks or, or anything in there. You can see that master cylinder this is your master cylinder down in here, and then this pipe goes down to the slave. I crawled underneath the car, checked the slave cylinder, which is up under there. There's your slave cylinder, no leaks there. Everything looks good. Nice and pretty, actually. I like that heavy-duty slave cylinder. I'll post a link to that below, because I I've, I've really enjoyed that one. The, uh, the other ones are plastic. That one's a, like made out of a, some sort of metal. It's a lot better. Anyway, there's not a problem with the slave, and the slave, for the pedal to hit the floor, that would have to be, that would have to be pushed out, but it's in. So that didn't make any sense. Both of them seem to be fine. So I'm sitting here thinking, geez, what could possibly be wrong now? I'm going to show you. This is kind of funny, but uh, it shows, you know, th these are all different things. If you're having clutch problems, um, the more you understand about how the system works, the faster you can narrow it down. This only took me a couple minutes to figure out. So here's my clutch pedal, and it's, it's back up right now. I put it back up, but um, it goes up into here, and then there's a bar that carries across. So you can see this bar up top here that carries over from the clutch pedal. And right here you have your linkage. Now this is what had popped off. I saw this on the bottom the floor bed of the truck the other day. I didn't know if it just something that fell out of my pocket or what, but look at that. See how that is worn out right there? It's really worn, and then there was a clevis pin in there, which is pretty much destroyed at this point. That piece is really worn out, and it's gonna cause additional wear to this if I'm not careful. Um, this is just a little bracket that bolts onto the end of the bar there. It's something that I should be able to replace fairly easily. For now, I'm not gonna do that because I've gotta keep going, uh, get back on the road. So I'm just gonna stick this in and I, I'm gonna put a different pin in there to see if I can hold it. Um, these pins I just had in the bed of the truck, they come in handy on all sorts of things, but uh, hopefully that'll stay in place now. But my, my clutch has been acting a little shaky lately since that since I've noticed that washer on the floor of the truck, I'm, I'm wondering if that had something to do with it. Uh, let me see if I can push that in. It seems to be operating fine now. And this here sends the sensors to your car to let it know the clutch is engaged and it's okay to uh, start. That was just, this is, this is a fun little thing I'm gonna have to replace here. Um, but I thought I'd share that with you because uh, you know, a lot of people come to YouTube because they're having clutch issues. They can't figure out what's wrong with it. Some people just don't know to look for the simplest things like that little washer right there. Um, but with that in place, I'm hoping that it'll hold up. I've got some loads to run today and, uh, really this, this arm sticking out here needs to be replaced. I, it looks like somebody put the washer on there to try and help it out, but that's not gonna hold up, that it's worn out on this edge that it should just, you know, be able to pop on like a little ball. And actually this arm is probably worn out. It could even be bent at this point. So that piece might need to be replaced. Basically, I've got a little more, um, I've got a little more work to do on my clutch, apparently. It just reminds me of our boat. You know, I had our boat for sale for quite some time. Um, I put it up at uh, not a book value with the trailer and the, the wakeboard tower for 15 grand. 
a woody bit. Um, I lowered it to about 10. Somebody came out, a bunch of people came out and looked at it, 10 grand. But the problem is, is when we tried to run it, uh, we'd get out into the lake and, and it would start to act up a little bit. One time somebody came by and looked at it and I couldn't get it to turn over uh, with the elephant ears on it here in the driveway. And I began to think, the, the boat had a new motor. I began thinking, you know, what if I'm just having, uh, what if I didn't winterize it in time? What if there's a crack in the motor or something like that? But that, you, know, you wouldn't notice a crack until you really got it under pressure, but it did act up a little bit out in the lake. After another year of me doing some mechanical things, I walked out there and I had been trying all sorts of stuff with it, cleaning the carburetor, um, all sorts of stuff. And I finally sat down on the boat. The kids wanted to go out on the boat one weekend. And I started to think about it. Uh, there was bad fuel in it. I pumped the fuel out, but it was still having trouble running. After pumping the fuel out, uh, it, it just wouldn't start. And so what I ended up doing, and not all the fuel was bad. There was, there was definitely some bad fuel in there, but I think the filters, the, the water filters would have caught some of that. Um, and the reason why there was water in the tank is because the, the gas cap seal had uh, eroded away. So when it rained, a little bit of water was getting down to the tank. The real issue with the boat turned out to just be the safety switch. You know, the little safety switch that you push your, your, your keys into so that if you go flying out of the boat, uh, the switch pops and it tells the boat to shut off. The safety switch was worn out on the inside. So what I, what I did to test that, because I was thinking, well, you know, it seems like it's just not getting electrical connection, but I know I had, I had two batteries fully charged, both turned on, and it, and it just kind of felt like it was turning over, but the, the plugs weren't firing for some reason. So I bypassed that switch, fired it up, boom, we had an awesome day. I mean, the boat ran perfect. Um, and I had actually dropped the boat's price to about $6,000. Um, you can guess I took that off the market pretty quick because I was thinking I had a problem with the boat and I was willing to sell it for $6,000, half price. Turns out there's nothing wrong with the boat. And uh, now that everybody knows that the boat runs and it's reliable, nobody wants to sell it anymore. That's the funny thing about you know, mechanics and learning to do this stuff on your own. The more you learn about the equipment you own on your own, the more money you're going to save because it would have cost me money to take that to the dealership. It probably would have cost me several hundred dollars, if not more in diagnosis for them to figure out what was wrong with that boat. But I think it goes into more than that. You know, like this right here, the truck breaking down. If I didn't know enough about how a clutch works, I would have probably had a tow truck come out here and tow it to the nearest guy to have it fixed. Spent several hundred dollars before I realized that all I had to do was go into my toolbox and grab a small little pin and stick it in there. I almost sold the boat, a $15,000 boat for 6,000 bucks if somebody would have bought it because I didn't know why, why the motor was turning off or why it didn't want to stay running. It never occurred to me that it, all I had to do was bypass the safety switch, which on that boat, it has high sides. I don't really even need the safety switch. I'll probably put a new safety switch in, but a $20 safety switch isn't that big of a deal. Just screw it into the back. Right now it's still bypassed. <laughs> Those things are so simple, so easy to understand. Had I not have learned the things that I have learned over the years of learning to do all of this stuff on my own, to fix these things on my own, I would have lost a lot of money. I would have, uh, I, I would have been a whole lot of things I don't want to say on YouTube. That is the reality. That is why, you know, I think everybody should learn 
to be their own mechanic. Everybody should learn the equipment that they're using. You will save so much money, so much time, and accomplish so much in life just by learning how to operate the equipment that you're using and, and learning how it functions, learning how it works. I have found that there is very little that I can't fix on my own. Most of the time, it's because I need a particular lift or a particular tool that I don't personally have and it's not worth for me to invest in. Um, obviously, bigger repairs, like when we put the motor in this truck, that's not something that I would have done on my own. A lot of the, the other repairs I try and do on my own. I try and do um, most of the basic mechanical repairs, at least on the truck. The Tahoe, we still take to a dealership because that's the, the car that Shauna drives with the kids. If something like this happens, she's not gonna be able to go under there and fix it. I, I worked on the clutch myself, so I know uh, more about it and it only took me a couple minutes to fix it. I've spent more time filming this video than it took me to figure out what was wrong with the car and fix it. So all I can say is, and, and the point of this video is to encourage people out there to uh, start learning. I think we've gone through a couple generations um, you know, my grandfather's generation would have flat out been able to do this stuff. They would have fixed things and then they would have moved on. I'm not saying anything about any other generations. My dad is a very skilled carpenter, very skilled at home repairs, but he's not mechanically inclined. So it's not something that I learned growing up. I learned a lot about home renovations and we pretty much took a uh, an old circa 1900 farmhouse, turned it into that. I did not... Uh, learn mechanics. It's something that I've really taught myself. Uh, when I was in college, I started to learn mechanics because I traded my old minivan in for a 1983 uh, 944 Porsche, and I couldn't afford to take the Porsche to a, uh, a Porsche dealership to get it fixed. So I started learning mechanics back then. I actually started learning boat mechanics back then, but I never learned it to the extent that I have had to learn it keeping all of our equipment that we have running and operating on our farm. And that's that's where now that, I, that I've learned all of that stuff, I think back about all the things that I've thrown away, all the pieces of equipment that I have gone out and repurchased simply because something didn't work. And I think about all that money that was wasted when if I had just taken a few hours to try and work through it and figure it out, watch some YouTube videos, um, I could have fixed those things and saved so much money. Uh, I'm beginning to think that, you know, your new mechanic is going to be online. You're going to start learning from your peers on how to repair things. You're going to take the time to do it because the cost of taking it in somewhere is just getting so expensive. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it encourages you to go out and actually try and work on things your own, on your own. This, when this happened, it was just one of those super simple things that you know, at first you're thinking, oh shoot, my clutch just hit the floor. It's not coming back up. I, that happened in my Porsche, but in my Porsche, the, the clutch went through the firewall. We had to remove the motor, fix the firewall, and put the motor back in. It was just a big deal. But I'm thinking, dang it, you know? And then I take two minutes to look over the situation and I find a solution that quickly. And that comes from, uh, you, you're thinking, because I told you what it is, it's a very simple thing, but I guarantee you 80% of the drivers out there, if not 90% of them, if that happened to them, they wouldn't have a clue what just happened or how to fix it. And that is the sad thing about our generation is that we aren't that inclined. Even my dad, even though he's not mechanically inclined, he probably would have figured that out. People in our generation, millennials, uh, haven't, you know, it's not something that we even think about. We just take the car to you know, Jiffy Lube or one of those places and get it taken care of. This is a video to help encourage to stop doing that, stop wasting money. A lot of times it could be something very simple. If it is a repair that needs uh, some more work, I mean, the clutch on uh, the clutch cylinders on something like this, super easy to do. Nothing uh, too extravagant. Obviously, if you had to replace the entire clutch, you've got to take the transmission out. That's a bigger problem. Stuff, stuff like this, uh, if you had, if you have any intellect, which I know you do, you can get out there, fix it, be back on the road super quick. The boat, you know, it's, it's funny. I'm going to joke about that for the rest of my days because I almost sold that boat for $6,000, half its book value because of a $20 part.
That's no good. That's bad. You don't want that to happen to you. So don't let it happen to you. Get out, learn how to fix stuff. Have fun with it. Make videos, put them up online. People like watching that stuff. There's a lot of people that just like watching repair videos because they learn new tricks or they, they see something that somebody else did that makes them curious because it is a knowledge building thing. It takes time to build knowledge. You have to work through these things a lot. Uh, just the tractor that I was fixing the other day, there were a lot of things on that tractor that had I known more about mechanics back in 2014 when I bought that tractor, I probably would have started to fix back then and it wouldn't be such a mess now and I wouldn't have to spend so much time fixing it now. All of this information, this um, growing of knowledge becomes extremely valuable to us, especially at a time when we could be hitting into higher food prices, things were, that are going to be start consuming your funds in other ways. Uh, learning to save money on something as simple as uh, basic mechanics uh, will take you a long way. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for more fun on our ranch.